Welcome to episode 22 of the Reboot franchise. So, again, you know, I'm going to start negotiating contracts because I'm fed up of always seeing that up here. Let's take a look at who needs to renegotiate contracts. There we go. Eric Murray and Matt Filer. Those are guys we're going to want to keep. We're going to want to keep D'Angelo Brown, Westerman. Could probably go on his way. Fragal, Brooks, Ortiz, Henry, Stewart. You know, I kind of forgot we kept Janice in all honesty. Um... Not worried. The only two people I'm worried about seeing there are Justin Tucker and Sam Cook, because we will have to replace them. We can't re-sign them. They were over 70 overalls. So that's just, you know, the little wrinkle with punters and kickers in this series. So this week, we've got the Seahawks. Also, we can start scouting players. Let's see if there's been any news since just the one thing about that one free safety. And I do now know that Gilbert Turner is out of Alabama. Now, Alabama are already, you know, pre-existingly... A preferred place of mine but this series has already very much been about players out of Alabama which are Quan Barber and Rashad Bass just two of them of course Tim Williams and Marlon Humphrey already on the team so Alabama has nestled its way in and of course it would Ozzie Newsom after all is still the general manager of these Baltimore Ravens and he still is going to go to Alabama for his players. So with Gilbert Turner, not only do we know that he's going to have superstar development, he's coming out of a very good school. He's very highly rated. I think he's right now the fifth overall ranked player. Now, we obviously don't need a free safety, but we can move one of our safeties to strong safety. Strong safeties are basically almost impossible to find free safeties a little bit easier. That is a guy we're definitely looking at. Of course, we're not going to have a super early pick next year, and we may have to, you know, trade around and stuff. Not that we've got any players to trade away, but we could potentially do something. And then we've got Jav Javaris Edwards, rather. He's a recent Wake Forest transfer who was one of the best college football players coming out of Europe. I don't exactly know what that means, but it does mean that he will also have superstar development. And we will, of course, get him onto the watch list. So we just take a quick look here at everybody generally. Number one guy, quarterback out of Alabama. Then we look at the number five guy, quarterback out of Alabama. You know, love it when that happens because obviously that would be very likely to happen. We see a lot of Stanford up here as well early in these early ones. We're trying to look for that one guy whose name I don't even remember. Banks Wingo, he is Barkevius Mingo's cousin. Raphael Colbreth is a distant relative of Benedict Cumberbatch. And I really should have paid more attention to the guy's name because now I'm I'm kind of just randomly looking around. Javaris Edwards, there he is, another free safety. So getting a free safety, and he's a second rounder, which is nice. Getting a free safety with superstar development, it's going to be pretty easy this year if we decide that's what we want to do. Anyway, that is enough of all that nonsense. Let's take a look at the Seahawks who will be playing this week. So it will be Thomas Rawls at running back for them, and he's very good. 92 overall, we have struggled quite a bit against running backs with over 90 overalls. So right outside linebacker, second year player Gabriel Stovall. Cornerbacks looking a bit different. Braden Banter, a second year player out of Utah, and Eric Rowe. Now these two guys are fast, of course Shaquille Griffin fast as well, but Richard Sherman there with the 88 speed, of course his coverage is incredible, so it doesn't mean that he's gonna be easy to take advantage of, but the 88 speed, if he gets matched up, against our rookie receiver, he may have some problems. So, we know what the Seahawks look like. Basically identical to the Seahawks of today on defense and on offense. So we know they're very good. They're 2-0. We won our last game in overtime. We have not been playing great. Trayvon Bromley, I mean, fumbling was never a thing we even thought about for a second with him before. And maybe we've got to spend some of the XP that we're trying to save on carrying just to make sure it doesn't happen again. So I did actually decide to spend some of his XP, but more just on spin move. We've put that up to the top level possible now, and he's going to be ready to go into this game. We're going to need the best out of everybody here against this Seahawks defense. There's no point even mentioning how good it is. We know it's incredible. So we're going to get straight into the action here, and the Seahawks start with a pass over the middle there. It's a completion, a first down, and we got lucky that that was actually a tackle. Second and five, Wilson passing again, and it's another completion to Graham, and he's tackled by two guys, finally brought down, but first and ten at the 26, and now we see Russell Wilson trying to use his legs, but a quick reaction there by Tyus Bowser stops that, and it's a sack, and then on third and five, 
Our man Washington coming in, the middle linebacker, with the sack to stop them. And they actually missed the field goal, so the score now nothing to nothing. And we have the ball, and Trayvon Bromley has a good run there. So we start now on first and ten with the passes. Coming out a bit earlier than we'd want to, passing, but we get a completion there to Juju Smith-Schuster on third and seven now. Looking, and that's just a miscommunication on the hitch. It doesn't go right, but we get the three points and the kickoff to banter the second-year cornerback there. And he's going to be looking to return this, but look at that huge hit by Terrence Brooks. Stops him right there. Now a quarter back draw by Russell Wilson the spin move but Rashad Bass hits him forces the ball out but it's recovered again by the Seahawks and now they have the ball second and eight at the 23 yard line Washington again on that spy on Wilson and he cannot get anything and it's another sack third and nine now Wilson again rolling out to the right defenders are there and that should have been an interception by Kiwan Hardwick he doesn't get it but we managed to hold him to three points and now a quarterback draw with Philip Van de Yacht. he picks up the first down a good run play there they didn't expect that third and inches who do you need you need Jaquan Barber easily picks that one up Gets over the line and then, of course, trucks the first man there, knocks him backwards onto his back. Third and 18 now. Philip Vandiat rolling out to the right, setting up. Had a wide open George Connor, but just completely misses him somehow. And we end up having to punt the ball back. And now the Seahawks with good field position. Thomas Rawls fighting through, but it's Rashad Bass with another fumble. A great catch and a tiptoe on the sideline there by Washington to recover the fumble. The first hit on Humphrey, but a second Alabama player comes in and then Washington cleans it up. And now a fumble straight away again by Trayvon Bromley. I say straight away, it was second and five. But first and goal now for the Seahawks who got the ball after we had to punt it away and they get a touchdown. So now the score is 10 to three. Vandiat rolling out to the right. Looking for something here, and this time he finds Juju Smith-Schuster. A big improvement this time over the last attempt. So first and ten, and we're passing again because we've got 40 seconds left in this first half, and it's a completion to Juju Smith-Schuster there. First and ten again, now looking to pass there to the right side, and it's tipped. It was thrown into coverage, and it's Richard Sherman with the interception, aiming for George Conner, and it doesn't work out. And now we're in the second half. A lofted pass there to Parker. Picks up a nice first down on second and 11. First and 10, and we're running the ball again. Of course we are. Philip Van has got space, and is caught from behind by Eric Rowe. It looked like that could have been a big rushing touchdown for him, but we get a rushing touchdown here with Tariq Cohen. Two blockers and nobody had to block anybody. Thomas Rawls again finding success against us. Making people miss not being tackled. And now on second and goal he's looking for that big hole there created by his blockers. And he's in for the touchdown. Seahawks kicking off to us. It's Stokes back to return. And he doesn't find a space there. As a matter of fact he fumbles. It's recovered and the Seahawks take it in for another touchdown. But after second review it was ruled that he was down. So it's not a fumble and we keep the ball. Trayvon Bromley now catching it and getting a first down that way. Second and ten. It's play action again. Looking for Jakeem Grant. If he would have been taller that may have been a reception. Third and ten. And he's looking the direction of Jakeem Grant again. And this time he catches it and picks up the first down. First and ten. 34. Looking to the right side for Connor. Finds him at the sideline now I've got a third and eight a quick pass to Weeks he's got the first down second and goal we're trying to run it with Tariq Cohen he gets one block by Ortiz on Chancellor but he cannot get past Wagner and on fourth and goal we go for a pass and it's a failure because players tripped over each other Parker's lying on the floor when he should have the ball in his hands in the end zone second and seven now and it's a huge run by Rawls finally Marlon Humphrey comes over and catches him from the opposite side of the field third and nine Wilson's looking to run but he's got absolutely nowhere to go and he is brought down sacked and now we go for play action first and ten rolling out with the bootleg it's a completion to Juju Smith-Schuster a great play there first and ten now Trayvon Bromley was in motion Philip Van Act absolutely ridiculous play seemed to just throw the ball down that should have been a forward pass but it's a fumble the Seahawks get the ball third and seven they complete it to Jimmy Graham who will not be tackled by the first man as a matter of fact, just won't be tripped up by him. But Rashad Bass making plays on first and 10. And now we set up this third and 14. And but Thomas Rawls just not getting away from him. Finally, we bring him down. We get the ball back. Third and six. It's a completion. No, it's not. Jakeem Grant couldn't hold on. 36 seconds left. Fourth and six. We need this completion. We get this completion. We've still got a chance here. 25 seconds left on second and 10. And it's a sack. A fumble. That is not going to help us whatsoever. Third and 18. Now, there was a wide open player. He didn't see him we've got one more chance fourth and 25 George Connors open but he tries Jakeem Grant who was open the last time and he cannot make the catch you know we knew we, we had a tough game coming in against the Seahawks but that's a game we shouldn't have lost and it's one of those games that really 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 annoys me think about the reason why we didn't score well okay maybe it wouldn't have been a touchdown but guys tripping over each other in the red zone is ridiculous and in all honesty, Philip Van Dijk does need to get a little bit more accurate. We do need that from him. 57% completion percentage today. 
213 yards, no touchdowns, just one interception. We, that needs to improve. Trayvon Bromley, 54 yards today on 12 carries. He can run 80 yards. Tariq Cohen, 16 yards and a touchdown. That's not, you know, good in terms of the average. Jakeem Grant, 63 yards. Juju Smith-Schuster, 59. I'm not seeing anything I like it. Too many drops. Two by Jakeem Grant, one by Juju Smith-Schuster, one by Demarcus Parker. Please start doing something for the team. Blocking. I... Blocking seems to have got worse. The linemen are supposed to be gotten better. The linemen are supposed to have gotten better, but they're not. They're worse. The linebackers, though, these two guys, these two guys make plays. Hunter Washington, Rashad Bass, nine tackles, eight tackles, sex, two and a half for Hunter Washington, one for Tyce Bowser, one for Rashad Bass, half a sack for Bernard Cooper. Interceptions, we didn't have any of those. We did get forced fumbles, though. Two by Rashad Bass, the rookie, putting in some numbers in the stats column. So, of course, we will forget this loss. A 17-10 loss to the Seahawks, of course, you know, isn't that bad. It, the bad thing is we should have won that game. But we can forget that loss if we win next week's game against the Bengals. Time to start scouting players as well. And, well, you know, where are we looking? We're looking at linemen, aren't we? They're supposed to be good, but pressure's coming through too much. Obviously, it was, it was the Seahawks. That's obviously, you know, a kind of built-in excuse there. It's a very good defense, but... I don't know. I, there's, there's enough problems with this team to give us stuff to look at in the scouting. So we just looked at the outside linebackers today. You'll have to excuse this being permanently broken. Three guys here that we've added to the draft board, watch list, whatever you want to call it. So the Bengals are 0-3 and we made a big decision. It was talked about the whole time in the coach's room that we could move to a different offense and it's been decided. Our first three games, we didn't see enough. Philip Van Dijk had one game with three touchdowns, didn't throw any touchdowns in the other games, and we just haven't been moving the ball as well as we should be doing. We've got the talent, so we need to start putting them in a system that will allow them to succeed and take advantage of Van Dijk's ability to run 80 yards in the last game, and most of that was not off designed runs, and the 0-3 Bengals, probably a good team to start trying something against. We've had time to, you know, try and install it over the past few weeks slowly. And now in week four, we can feel we can start switching to it. Let's take a look at the Bengals team we'll be playing. And let's try and find out why they're 0-3. So the first thing you do is look at injuries. It tells you nobody's injured. So you look at the teams they've played. They've played the Rams, Patriots, and Titans. Two of those relatively big losses. One of them a close one. So don't start thinking that this will be an easy victory. So Cole Beasley will be the man in the slot. And, you know, we, we know how dangerous John Ross is for us. We've always had trouble dealing with him. But it might be a little bit easier if we can put our slower guy on Cole Beasley and just have a matchup for speed the best we can with John Ross. So at cornerback, we knew about Tavon Young. I don't think Morris Claiborne was on the team the last time we played them. And the one thing I look at when I look at these guys is there is not a lack of speed at all. So here we go. We're going to have a bit of a different looking scheme heading into this game. We're going to have a bit of a different approach generally. And let's see how it works against the 0-3 Bengals. It would be embarrassing to lose this game. We don't want to finish an episode 2-2. Two and two. We want to be 3-1. and one. That would be a real nice record to have. So here we go. Divisional games are very big at this stage in the season to give us an idea of how the rest of our season will look because, of course, we have to play these teams more than anybody else. And they start off with a pass to AJ Green, but he took a big hit in return. And again, another big hit there by Rashad Bass, and we managed to get the ball back from them on a punt. Second and eight. Philip Andiak was looking to pass, couldn't see anything, then runs. That's a great play from a rookie. Third and nine now because we had to punt away again. And AJ Green, another the catch but pays for it again Rashad Peters with the big hit they tried to run for it on third and one but it's a great stop but again we had to punt away right now neither offense doing much but this is a great punt out at the one yard line so now they're pressed in their own end zone Andy Dalton looking to pass has trouble gets sacked Rashad Bass gets the safety what a great play from the rookie his teammate Tim Williams there Alabama now the Ravens comes to congratulate him. First and 10, and it's a fumble by Trayvon Bromley. We've seen this more this season than we've seen all of last season, and we're only in week four. Now, again, we managed to stop them, hold them to a field goal. We didn't do anything on offense, and now Andy Dalton's throwing it deep downfield, trying, but he gets tipped in the air, and Casey Jacobs manages to track the ball down, gets the interception, now is looking to return. It gets tackled, but look at this. Thrown in the air, Casey Jacobs is able to track it down pick it off we have the ball back third and eight now though we've got to get a first down here and again we don't get anything punting away but again the Bengals don't do anything and we've got the ball third and four and now we have a first down there with Jakeem Grant's reception 
second and 19. Looking to pass Philip Van de Yacht. And, well, I tell you what, if William Jackson was the receiver on that play, that was excellent. He ran that route perfectly. Philip Van de Yacht, the one who's got to try and catch him. He does get him. Parker helps him. A great interception by Jackson. Can't take anything away from him there. Andy Dalton rolling out to the right. Is he looking to run? No, he passes it off to Giovanni Bernard, who just gets stopped with that spin move. Casey Jacobs was able to bring him down. First and goal, Washington flies through the hole, stops him. Now it's third and goal. Can we stop them? A huge play here. Can we stop them getting the touchdown? Andy Dalton rolling around, throws his shot to Tyler Eifert, who is tackled by four players. Another two were there, six ready to make the stop. And we hold them to another field goal. First and ten, and it is a sack on Van Dijk. Has no chance. Sets up this third and 21. A lofted pass there to George Connor. George Connor jumps over the attempt to tackle, and George Connor is gone. Nobody is going to catch him. The rookie scores a huge touchdown there on third and 21 he took it all the way from the 15 yard line into the end zone that is 85 yards for those of you who can't do maths first and 10 that's a falling over his own man there Dalton it's a sec second and nine Van Dijk throwing it up again for Connor he's already had one of these and he makes this catch again tackled at the 14 yard line third and two Van Dijk looking to pass rolls out to the left now has an open Connor is able to make that throw it's a difficult one but he gets the touchdown Score 16 to 6 now. Andy Dalton throwing it up into the air. It's a risky pass, but somehow it's completed. John Ross with the catch should have been picked off. Hunter Washington can't make that tackle on Giovanni Bernard. Neither can anybody else, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. This might be a high scoring game after a very slow start to it. Now, George Connor gets out of that from two guys. Two guys couldn't bring him down. Nobody else is going to catch him. George Connor is into the end zone for another touchdown. That is his 10th career reception. And he does that. Ten catches in the NFL. And look at that. Gets out of the tackle of a safety in a corner. And he's gone for the touchdown. Second and three now. And it's a completion again to AJ Green, who's tackled at the 27-yard line. First and ten. Dalton looking to pass. Throws it to the right. Completes to John Ross. He's just tackled there by Casey Jacobs. First and goal. Giovanni Bernard runs, spins into the end zone. Bernard is trying to keep up with George Connor right now. Second and 10 for Van de Yacht. It's a pass again to George Connor. This time won't get away, but it's still a big reception. Unfortunately, we still had to punt away. First and 10 for Dalton. Rolling out to the right. Throwing it deep downfield. He's already done this once today. And the exact same result. Casey Jacobs with another interception. Casey Jacobs this time taking it over the 40-yard line. Is tackled by Andy Dalton. He's tried that twice and it hasn't worked out twice. Third and 11. And a big catch by Parker there. Somehow makes no he doesn't. It was incomplete. He doesn't make the catch and we had to punt away again. Now Giovanni Bernard making big plays, making people miss. Giovanni Bernard off to the races. He's absolutely trying to keep up with George Connor here. It is a competition between the two of them to rack up insane numbers of yards. An 82-yard touchdown there. Both of them, multiple touchdowns, lots and lots of yards. It's a big game for both of those. We made a change on the offensive line there after a ridiculous sack is given up, but, well, it didn't really make a difference. Tim Williams there somehow managing to bring Andy Dalton down. Just running over Giovanni Bernard. Third and 15. Dalton rolling out to the right. He's trying this again. A third time. Ball tipped up again. Casey Jacobs probably could have made that interception, but he trips over a teammate. Second and six now. The screenplay to Trayvon Bromley. That's right. Trayvon Bromley does actually still play for this team. We do have running backs. You may have forgotten that. Second and five now. Van Dijk looking to pass again. He completes it over the middle to Parker for the first down. Now it's third and 14 after a holding penalty by the tight end. Max Kimrin, a pass there is incomplete. Fourth and 14 now. We've got to try and get this. We're down four points, two minutes 30 left. Max Kimrin, the man who committed the holding penalty, makes that catch for the first down. Third and 10. It's a completion to Judas Smith-Schuster, tackled at the two-yard line. First and goal now. Philip Van Dijk rolling out to the right, buying himself some time, finds Weeks. In the corner of the end zone, perfectly played. It's a touchdown. The score now 30 to 27. The Bengals only have a minute left, but they've got big playmakers. Tyler Eifert with the catch, but really these receivers are paying for every catch over the middle. Huge hits by Rashad Peters all game long. They do get the field goal there. The score now tied at 30 to 30. Going downfield for George Connor, just trying it. Doesn't work. Second and 10. Drops back. Tries the exact same thing again. George Connor hasn't stopped making plays today and he won't stop now. Wins the game with that touchdown. Incredible play. What a finish to this game. But we will be having a talk with Connor about that celebration at the end. And I just got a quick glimpse of the stats. Of course, I wasn't 100% sure exactly what they were. Let's just say I'm not happy with Van Yak at all. This game... George Connor made him look incredible. He had a terrible game. A te this is probably the worst 391-yard five-touchdown game 
a quarterback has ever had in the history of the NFL. It was so bad. 45% completion percentage. His first seven passes went incomplete. Now, of course, some of those were drops. Some of those were, you know, just defended passes. But they were... I, I'm not happy with him, of course. You throw five touchdowns and for 391 yards, I'm not going to be too mad. But I'm not just going to pretend that, you know, he's perfect because he's not. Rushing didn't go well for us. Trayvon Romney tried and then was just forgotten because, well, passing worked out in the end. And receiving. George Connor, a rookie. Don't forget that. A rookie in his fourth game in the NFL. Six receptions, 291 yards, almost went over 300, four touchdowns. That one drop probably would have seen him go over 300. Four touchdowns, one of them, of course, to win the game as time expired. Nobody else, I mean, there was a lot of individual receptions, but nobody else really doing anything. They didn't need to. George Connor had it covered. Max Kimrin put us in a bad spot with a holding penalty. And more than made up for it with a big time catch on third down. Then blocking, too many sacks allowed. We tried to chain someone on the line as well. And what we see here is Rashad Peters with eight tackles on the team. But Hunter Washington, eight and seven of those solo tackles. Four for a loss. He had a good game. Rashad Bass there as well with seven sacks. Just the one for Rashad Bass. Interceptions, two for Casey Jacobs. Could have possibly even had a third and a did we have false fumbles? No, we didn't. But this is how you win games. You do it with turnovers. It ended up being a lot closer than it should have been, but we just couldn't move the ball for most of the game. But we managed to do it in the end. And we get it done. 37 to 30. We put the Bengals in an 0-4 hole and we put ourselves at 3-1. So week five is a bye week. And of course, that gives us time to further install this offense. That was just a quick look at it. We didn't use too many different plays. Oh, and there we go. I mean, I didn't think about that. Let's take a look at the stats here. Of course, of course, George Connor gets it. What else do you expect? But Casey Jacobs as well. So take a picture of that. AFC Offensive Player of the Week, George Connor. AFC Defensive Player of the Week, Casey Jacobs. Both are Ravens. Both are with this team for a long, long time to come. And just looking at those stats again, it is ridiculous. So on the bye week, we will finish this episode it was close to being a bit of a disappointment, but we've come out 3-1, actually right now top of the division, so we will absolutely take that. We've got stuff to improve on, but you know, we saw flashes there, and we actually saw cover two working very well, because we've got two very good cornerbacks on the outsides, we've got good safeties, and we can create pressure with these guys. These One is a run-stopping defensive end, I do that as I highlight the pass rusher. So one's a run stopper, but one's a pass rusher. And of course, two pass rushing outside linebackers. We can create pressure with just four guys. And we've got the talent on the outside for the rest of it. So cover two could be something, you know, cover two man that we start playing a little bit more regularly. And we will start looking to pass a little bit more regularly as well. We're not going to change anything with the line. Maybe it was just that game, but Filer really annoyed me and we threw Bruce over at left tackle, put Nisley back up at right tackle. But we'll stick with this line for now. That is it for this episode. Also, considering Weeks as a starting tight end, maybe... Actually, I said maybe. I forgot about this. Look, we'll go on and this is why it should be the starting tight end. Superstar development. So, sorry Parker, but Weeks is the starting tight end because of the superstar development. It would be a waste to not let him play as much as possible so that is the team as we move into these next games. We're going to be playing the Rams. Let's see who else will be playing quickly. The Steelers again, and it will be the AFC North that is up for grabs pretty much with that game. Not saying those other two teams can't turn their seasons around. I'm just saying they probably won't. 